making profits on the house, you know, because we, we put it on the market, we sell any profits we get, come back, any money we lost, obviously we lose, but it, 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 they're so fragile. And when time, time to cut, you know, programs, well, the states aren't making us a requirement, so they can cut it. Welcome to the Fine Home Building Pro Talk podcast, our regular discussion with building industry professionals. This is senior editor, Mark Peterson. Today, I'm joined by Matt Blomquist, building trades instructor at Taylorville High School in Taylorville, Illinois. You can find the Fine Home Building Pro Talk podcast and the original Fine Home Building podcast at finehomebuilding.com slash podcast. You can leave feedback and ask questions there too. Hello, Matt. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Great. Um, let's start at the beginning. Let's. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, you know, you're a trade. You're a trade school instructor at uh, Taylorville High School. How did? I mean, give us the give us the version of how you. I'm, I'm guessing there's an interesting story how you came about to that position. Uh, yeah. So pretty much, I didn't have any trades. Was always uh, something that was kind of a hobby. So I. I actually didn't take any building trades or anything in, in high school, um, you know, building, working my hands. My dad kind of got me into woodworking, stuff like 4-H and stuff. So that's kind of how I've always liked sure. doing things. I grew up in a, grew up in a rural community, actually Taylorville. Uh, so, you know, I always had laborious jobs, um, you know, playing sports, you know, athletes, football players, you know, you got to go do the heavy work, bale and hay and stuff. So I was, and I always enjoyed being outside. So that's kind of how the interest for me, as far as the style of work happened, um, I went to college. Mm -hmm. I went to University of Missouri. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to uh, get a, be a walk-on wide receiver there. So that's how I kind of ended oh, up in nice. Missouri. <laughs> um, so that was a fun experience. Um, again, yeah. I went there not really knowing what I wanted to do. Uh, I had sure. three brothers that were in the pre-architecture program. And I remember them working. Well, we're all studying for finals. They're working on these projects. I was like, man, that looks way more fun than what I'm doing. So that kind of <laughs> right? led me to my degree. So I have a minor in pre-architecture and interior design, and also a minor in sociology. And that's what made up my degree. Um, after college, I and during college, I'd come home and work for a family friend that was a contractor. And okay. so that's where I kind of started developing my carpenter skills. Then... I graduated college. I needed a job. And it's kind of funny. I asked Dave, I'm like, hey, do you mind if I work for you while I look for a real job? <laughs> you know, apparently, a right. Carpenter well, was well, a real, real job. job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so I did that for a few years. Unfortunately, he was battling cancer. Uh, he ended up losing the battle. Ooh. But during the end of his fight, uh, I was on the job site taking care of a lot of stuff at this time. I mean, we're, I was framing a house by myself with one other guy. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm running the job site, dealing with the customer and stuff from while he's in, you know, so hospital trial, bed. By, trial by fire. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he was a great mentor though. Um, gosh, I learned so much from him. He was amazing. Um, and it was one of those things we had no option, but throw me in there and get in there into the, you know, deep stuff. Um, would have loved to learn more business mm -hmm. side of things, but he passed away. Me and a buddy took over the company. We're like, shoot, we're in our mid young twenties. If we mess it up, we got time to recover. Yep. So we did that for a while. Sure. We, we were battling through the recession. Then um, his family was growing. He's getting ready to have another child. And his wife uh, wanted him to have a job that had benefits and all that stuff. And there was an opportunity in town. He's like, I'm going to go after it. And I said, that's fine. And by this point, I was starting to get burnt out on the business side of always running and uh, grinding. And so I was open to the opportunity. So he took it. Um, I had just started dating with now my wife. She uh, was a part-time nurse out the prison here locally. And she's like, hey, you know, that carpenter class Carp job will be opening up or the construction construction class job will be opening up probably soon. If you're interested, you know, maybe you can do that. And I was like, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. And well, about a month after she said that, the teacher retired. So I applied and started teaching for a college, uh, Lakeland College at the Table Correctional Center teaching their um, construction occupation certificate program. So that's how I got in teaching uh, about nine years ago. And then I did that for four years, the building trades job that's here at Taylorville High School, which is a public high school. Um, the teacher was leaving sure. to go be a principal somewhere. And they're like, Matt, you want to come over and take care of this? I said, yeah, let's do it. Uh, I got a raise plus summer's off. And 
So, because the college for the <laughs> right. prison, prison gig was all year round. And that's not, uh, yeah, not too many trades can say they have summers off. It's just the uh, correct it's exact opposite. right. You mean <laughs> yeah, the hottest time of the year, the worst time, almost the worst time to work in Midwest. Right. I get off there, sure, right? So, so now, um, so how long have you been in your current role? So five years. So we we relaunched the house building program in 2019. Uh, we had the house building program since 69, but it got put on pause a handful of years ago um, with some budget issues going on with the uh, Illinois government not paying, getting the schools paid. So, of course, trades classes were what was left by that point after the, right, you know, they yeah. started disappearing in the 90s. I was the last one in seventh grade to take wood shop here in Taylorville Junior High. So, yeah. fast forward and here we are and... Uh, built the house even through COVID and we're working on the next one. So that's great. So that, then I had questions of what exactly you're doing. So, so you are building houses. It's not just, cause I, I think back in the day at my high school and actually my son's high school too, I don't know if he was involved in it, but I don't, I don't recall that, but you know, they would build like sheds or they would build like projects and then they would sell them or donate them or something. But your, so your whole, your whole program is based around building houses from the ground up, not remodeling, just building up new houses. Yeah. I'm on, now we can do a remodel if we so desire. Um, but right now we've um, gotten a couple the cities that actually given us it. Well, We've had two lots donated to us in town um, that, that so uh, we build, we're building new. Uh, but yeah, I'm on the job site every day. I technically don't even have to go to the school for anything. It's the kids are bussed out to me back and forth. Uh, yeah, so I'm, it's it's a nice, my, so, my, my so, yeah. I'm employed with benefits. <laughs> right. Sounds like a great gig. Um, and which tra are there particular trades that you're teaching these kids or is it everything? I mean, every step of the house they're involved in. So, I mean, from the foundation, you know, from the excavation to the foundation, to the, to the framing, all of it. Foundation to trim. We're, we're part of it. This one. Now the last house we had the foundation already put in and ready for us, which ideally we wanted this okay. year, but being that everybody's so backed up, you know, um, by the time the foundation guy could get to us, um, we were on we, we yeah. were on job site and so the kids but it was great the kids got to help they got to be part of that um which worked out great because it was so hot when school started this year uh we end up we're down at the other house which was just a block east of where we're at uh finishing up a few inside details so we got to be in the air condition when school first started when it was nice and hot and so yeah the kids have literally been uh since the whole first shovel into you know shovel into the ground and they'll go until so the last touch up on paint and how i mean is it immediate so how much versus is there class what, what happens in the is there any classroom time i mean is, is, do you, are you looking at the i mean you looking do they have books that they're looking at are you showing them films or is it just come out to the job site and this is what we're doing that's right what what can a book teach you that building on the job site <laughs> isn't already going to take care of that's why, true. why waste the paper right no it's and, absolutely now and, i do supplement I was going to say, I do supplement, uh, you know, lessons. Obviously, we, we one big thing where I kind of, I guess, have gotten noticed a little bit more on Instagram and the community I'm involved in on Instagram and builders and stuff. Uh, we, we put it, we, we build, you know, focus on the building science and high performance stuff. So the kids are learning, you know, they're getting supplemental stuff of not only, you know, what we're doing on job site, but they, they may have assignments or videos that correlate to that. And then next semester will be fact, you know, um, start getting them more involved in project management side of things too. But yeah, traditional okay. classroom part. Nope. None. Is, do you, I mean, are these kids, how do you, how do you, what's the school operate on the calendar? Is it a quarter? Is it a semester? Is it, how does it work? We're, we're semester. So we're, we're getting ready to finish up the first semester. Um, the way the class works is we have a morning session and an afternoon session. Uh, morning session comes out. They, they get about two hours every single day of work time on the class. Mm -hmm. it, it's three class periods. So, yeah, it factors out about two hours of work time for each group. So four hours of pretty much continuous work on the job site. Uh, you know, some days are a little bit more about training and going over and explaining and, you know, implementing, you know, techniques. In fact, you know, for example, um, representatives from Rockwell were here yesterday and showing the kids how to do installs with their their product and stuff, which was awesome. Uh, that's another thing we try to do is bring yeah. in professionals to 
you know, the more, the more somebody else can do, the easier my job becomes <laughs> and the better right. the kids listen. Right. And, and I, yeah. And I, and actually the, so uh, before I ask that, so you said four, so the kids, so if I'm part of your program, I'm out on the job site four hours a day, five days a week. Yeah, yeah, two hours a day. Yeah, for your so three class periods, which yeah factors out to two hours um, of approximate gotcha. work time by time. Yeah, so half the day you come out and work on job site every single day, Monday through Friday. Okay. So mostly it's juniors Great. and seniors because their schedule can handle that. Sure, because they've already have enough of the required requirements to make sure that they're going to graduate is, and, and are you doing all of the teaching yourself or are you, I mean, you mentioned that the Rockwell folks came out, but so do you have trim carpenters that are, you know, you're kind of gathered around watching a professional trim carpenter hang a door or are you, I mean, is there anyone, I mean, are you guys just doing everything besides um, you know, the, you know, the stuff that doesn't take huge equipment or super dangerous or whatever? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Uh, pretty much we do everything. Now uh, I have, well, last year with COVID, you know, there's, we were able to be on the job site in small groups since we're off campus. Um, mm -hmm. So and we didn't have any extra guests out there, really. But this year, it's all about bringing people back in. Uh, now, I'm a carpenter by trade. And so and we did a lot, you know, self-performed a lot of things. Uh, but we'll bring in like the electrician will come out and help out with things. Uh, we'll bring, you know, bring out the plumber. Um, we'll have people doing the roof roofing the shingling and stuff just because trying to have that many kids up on a roof to be chaos and you'd yeah. be all tied up in knots anyways it's <laughs> right. it, yeah counterproductive so i'm so i'm curious are you working with the same sub subcontractors over and over yeah or we're are they small different community. guys doing... yeah pretty much it's the same we're in fact in this community all but maybe two people in the trades are actually alumni of this class from all the way back oh, to 69 through. Yeah. So that's I mean, I, I get I get said yes to a lot, which is nice. I don't, I mean, not that I ask for anything too crazy, but they right. are hundred percent supportive. I, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I was imagining, you know, you call up a roofer and they come out to the job site and then there's a crowd of high school kids, you know, gathered around him and that he wasn't expecting, you know, it's like, wait, what what? What's this? Oh no. But no, yeah, no. I was yeah. I was they just all know yeah, so but they are interacting with, I mean, even the roofers, I would imagine, but you may not be on the roof, but I'm assuming he's explaining what he's doing and they're kind of watching what he's doing and and uh, and all that. Yeah, and then what we do also, especially when we get into like the sub trades, like electrical and plumbing and HVAC and things, uh, kids who may have like a, there's some people are like, yeah, I don't want to mess with plumbing or I don't want to mess with electrical. But then there's some kids that are like, um, especially we've had some kids go into electrical union round in, from my class and they, they're like, mm -hmm. I want to, be on the electrical all the time. I'm like, okay, you can do that. Cause I mean, there's so many things going on in the job site at one time and you sure. having 15 okay. kids try to wire up all the outlets. I mean, there's enough right. outlets. Everybody can do one or two, but uh, sure. if the kids are really interested in something. I let them do that and let them stay on that project. Or if they want to help the H that guys do the install, I'm like, all right, you guys can go yep. work with them and they become part of their crew. And those guys know when they come on the job site, they may have, a few helpers. And so we, we try to let people kind of cherry pick what they want to do in those, in those cases. Cause there's just trying to have 15 kids doing one thing, you know, putting up duct work. It's just, right. It, 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 it just doesn't work. I just, it's an interest. I just keep thinking of, you know, your typical HVAC guy or electrician working with a bunch of kids and, and, and it kind of get, it's kind of a hoot. I, you know, I would imagine they probably get a kick out of that. They are. Everyone gets kicked out of each other. <laughs> like <laughs> it's, and here's the thing, you know, what goes on on a job site and what goes on amongst a bunch of high school kids, not that far off. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep, exactly. I, I know the what you conversations mean. Conversations aren't that yeah. much different. <laughs> well, and you know what? I've always, it, it's interesting because I was just, so I'm in the process of building a house and I was just talking with the framer this morning. I walked down there in the morning and it's just right across the street. And, you know, he's got a list of things that we talk about and it's just, I've had most of my career I've been in construction, but the few white collar jobs that I've had, um, the, the most notable difference is when you're building a house or you're in part of a trades like that, and there's a problem that comes up, you have to get it solved pretty much immediately or, or nothing's getting done. 
So it really is a good way for kids. I mean, regardless of what they do after they take this class, it's a great lesson of how things, there's just not an option. You have to come together, whether it's an electrician and an HVAC guy or a framer and a trimmer, whatever, they have to come together and they have to say, hey, all right, we, before we leave here, this conversation, we need to figure out an answer. And there usually is an answer and it's, and it's oftentimes a compromise, but it's just, sure. it's a great feeling. And it seems like when you get into the white collar business, it's, man, you have one simple problem and it just goes on forever because nobody, you know, people's feelings get hurt or it's just, you know, no people are afraid to say anything. And the difference is you, these problems can linger because they're not, you know, life or death, not life or death, but they're yeah. not, they're not holding up the whole project. Yeah. And not it just seems to seem to get, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just so refreshing to go to a job site and, and just say, hey, this is wrong. We got to fix this or what can we, you know, and just sit there. And what a great lesson for kids. I mean, that's just, I mean, that carry that skill carries over to anything. Yeah. Well, and one thing I always tell these guys, it, well, A, I always focus on, uh, you know, never screwing the next guy. And the best part is we are the next guy. So we only screw over ourselves. So if we mess up something in framing, yeah. we get in there and we're plumbing. Well, we screwed ourselves. We got to, we got to tear it out, redo whatever. So the great lessons there. And I mean, uh, yeah, it it's, it's not uncommon for half of our walls to get built three times before they actually get stood up, you know, because they lay out the line <laughs> right. and they went to the wrong yeah. side or whatever, you know, all those common things. Yeah. And like I tell the kids, yeah, I said, makes, right. The good, these good carpenters and tradesmen, they're only good because they can fix their mistakes fast. Like it's, we don't yes. never make I'm, I'm working with a, I'm, I'm working with a neighbor and uh, he's, he was the first few days he worked with me. He's never done this before. And he was really hard on himself. He's like, Oh, I screwed that up. I screwed that up. It's like, well, don't worry. I'm, I plan on screwing up all sorts of things before we, before the day is through and the week is done, you know? So it's a, uh, it's a great lesson to learn that. And, and, and when I was in the trades, it was always nice to have somebody who wasn't afraid to mess up. I mean, usually there's not too many things that can't be fixed pretty quickly, but those people are usually often the ones who make the more mistakes are often the ones who turn out to be the most productive in the long run. Yeah. And well, yeah, and I another, kids. But, I'll never let them make a mistake that's, well, I will try to never let them make a mistake that's so big and so expensive that it's a true issue. Right. Sometimes I'll let them make the mistake. I'm like, oh, man, they're going to be mad at me because <laughs> that window is not <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's great. Is, uh, you know, I, I, but going back to what you said about how that, you know, they getting screwed over by, you know, you, if you're the, if you're the plumber, if you're the framer and you're screwing over the plumber and you're the plumber, well, guess what? Uh, that's another great lesson. I think that's even more important in today's building. Um, it, it, when you're trying to build a high, you know, a high performing house back in the, you know, back in the day, well, I mean, it go back far enough and the, a carpenter crew did almost everything, but you know, the division of labor in the nineties and the early two thousands where your framers didn't have, you know, they they didn't have any idea or care what the trim carpenters were doing or what the window guys were doing or what the insulators were doing. And the, and the plumbers didn't care what the HVACs were, you know, but now it's more important that everybody is kind of on the same page because a lot of these systems, they work together, you know? So it's, it's yeah. a great, yeah, you know, it's a great to learn that from right off the bat. So. Well, and when, especially, you know, when we talk about the high performance, these air ceiling details, you got to get so right at the very beginning and then you got to make sure somebody doesn't come through and mess it all up and poke a whole bunch of holes in there, right. you know? So yeah, it's, it's definitely, yep. uh, and, but the good, good thing is the kids don't, they don't know any different. They, they never built a house, you know, maybe they've helped their dad or uncle or grandpa or whatever randomly, but sure. for the most part, they've never done this. So to them, this is just the way, which is great. Unfortunately, some of them that go leave and go work for people and that's not the way. And, but <laughs> right. And there's a lot of that out there um, is, is just out of curiosity, what, is there one particular trade that it, that's the most of your students, you know, is it framing that they like the most? Is it hanging a window? Is it siding and drywall? What are, what are, what are your kids like doing the best? Framing's always popular because, and, and I'm the same way, because to me and to them, that's building. You, you frame, you stand, you have a house, right? Yep. So that's instant gratification. That is what everyone, when you say building a house, you think of people literally building, nailing boards <laughs> together, building a house. So framing is yeah, always too. loved. Um, they hate sanding and prepping trim and drywall. 
Yeah. Um, I do too, but right. it's 98% of that is in the prep. So there's no way yeah. around it. Um, a lot of kids get into electrical, um, you know, they, they like this because they know electricians and, you know, there's a good opportunity, you know, and in, with income, uh, and getting into that field. So electric electrical gets pretty popular. I enjoy plumbing, uh, as long as it's new construction, it's clean, it's fun. Yeah, it's clean. It's fun. I think it's a fun puzzle to put together. The kids for the most part yeah. seem to enjoy it. So I, I, I enjoy the plumbing part uh, or getting to know, mm -hmm. you know, know the plumbing part better uh i mean every kid kind of has their own thing some of the kids you know it just kind of you know are they detail oriented people or are they the you know slap it together kind of guy you know the more rough framing kind of people sure. you know everybody, everybody's got their little things yeah. and it, it starts to show as the project goes on how are your uh how do you how are you treated or considered by the local uh, building official <laughs> are they pretty understanding are they pretty thorough are they well, how we they... can do whatever. <laughs> we don't have anybody. <laughs> like, uh, oh, really? We, we, yeah. Well, there's. I, I didn't even know we had a plumbing inspector that even came into our town until we built this last <laughs> house. And the only reason they huh. were in town, huh, like, was because we was so much work going on because we had a big tornado come through a couple of years ago that did mm -hmm. a lot of damage. So we had a lot of work going on, and that's the only reason yep. I've ever seen an inspector we don't have a building inspector we don't have i mean so we gotta get from the biggest, I mean, what's, the nearest, what's the nearest big city to you uh spring springfield illinois is only 25 minutes away which is the capital um okay. gotcha but they're they don't mess with i mean we're like a, a, a rural farm town of ten thousand. they don't sure Yep. Now, and it's, it's one of those things where yeah, people but, try to, I mean, for the, the better builders always try to make sure they're following, obviously, safety codes for sure. Ener energy codes, we're, we're probably the one of the front runners on that. <laughs> do you do blower door tests uh, when you're done? We own one, yep. Oh, nice. Is your, and I'm sure that's a learn, the great learning experience as well. Do you, you know, it's interesting because uh, one of the things I was wondering is, so you have a semester... Can kids take both semesters? Yeah, it's a year long course. You, you take oh, it all year. Okay. So, so, do you try to schedule a house where you start it and finish it in a year, or is that possible with the way you, the way it works? That was our goal, but because of COVID, I have no idea if we can truly do that. The last house took us two years, but I mean, oh, when COVID, of COVID. Hit, we were finishing drywall and then it took us a whole another year. Um, now this one, we're moving lot, right along. I don't. They used to do it in about a two, a year and a half, two year time frame, and I'm gonna guess we're probably gonna be. Uh, it'll, if the kids keep asking me, and I just, I don't think we'll get it all the way done. <laughs> it, it, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll really well, be able to look at it and say this is a house, but I don't think it'll be all the yeah. way done in a year. Yeah, and, and and it depends on. And right now, everybody. So I don't know if your area is the same. I think you mentioned it, but it's just everyone. The subcontractors are so busy right now to get anyone on a job site is very difficult. Yeah. So is now when you build a house. So you, okay. So you, you the property was donated, and do you get local businesses or distributors or manufacturers donating materials i mean you said rock you know rock wool came out rock soul rock soul right yeah rock wool rock wool wool rock, yep and they so they came out uh they donated some products so do you have roofing and siding and all those people donating yeah so i got on instagram promoting kind of what we do right at the right time got connected with the right people so um, I'll name drop here real quick. Steve Basic, Jake Bruton, um, uh, Matt Reisinger, sure. those guys yeah, those, all have yep. been huge in helping out. So um, Huber Wood has helped us out with stuff. Rockwell jumped on right away. Dan Elliman from Rockwell, they mm -hmm. they donated. Um, we, we teamed up with T-Stud on this, this current house. Oh, oh my cool. gosh. Sega, Stego. Uh, carriers coming in on this one. Uh, so the first one, well, actually, yeah, Mike, Mike, Gerton, Mike Gerton was the one who recommended you. So Mike for, Gerton, for the show, yep, so. Mike Gert, yep, Mike Gerton. Uh, it, I had everyone's like, "How you get to do this?" I'm like, "I don't know." I got in the, I got 
connected with the right people at the beginning and they have been more than generous. And a lot of these guys now are becoming, you know, um, you know, friends to this point as, you know, as much as I get to communicate with some of these guys and uh, yeah, they've been great. Like they're very supportive of the program. Steve basic provided the floor plans for this new house. Uh, it's wow. You know, having these guys behind and be able to send them questions. Like I'm like, I can send them a picture and you know, text message them directly and get an answer back, you know, usually by the night, you know, before we come into the job site the next day has been huge. But, you know, and I, and I told Steve basic when I first talked to him, you know, I was like, I love what you and Jake are doing. And Jake's only three hours from me. So I, I'm actually able to go down and visit him. You know, I said, I love what you guys are doing. We're starting up this program. I want to do what you guys are doing. You tell me how to do it and we will do it. And that's kind of where we got going. So that first house got us a lot of attention uh and got me connected to a lot of people and like i said all these companies love it because uh, you know you know they they see the importance of a they're they're getting their product in front of future customers sure and or builders absolutely so yep. it kind of works out every you know for everything and you know it, it, these programs are so easy to cut like i mean even if we keep making profits on the house, you know, cause we, we put it on market, we sell any profits we get, come back any money we lost, obviously we lose, but it, 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 they're so fragile. And when time, time to cut, you know, programs, well, the States aren't making us a requirement so they can cut it. So it, yeah, I have, I mean, Sashco is another company just popped in my head. That's helping. I mean, it, it just, sure. they, th thanks to like Mark Willie and Steve and those guys and just connecting me to their networks it's been this build has been phenomenally um everybody's mm -hmm. been phenomenally generous uh owens corning is helping out with shingles now each uh four seven five supply um trying to think, make sure i get everybody um but yeah it's one of those things where uh each company kind of does their thing some can afford to mm -hmm. give the all the material that we may need from them some are just giving sure. very generous discounts or rebates uh you know each company can handle what they can handle and you know, if it's a dollar, if it's thousands of dollars of material, it, it, it's yeah. all great to me and very awesome. thankful. And, and plus just having the ability to connect with those people and send an email or a text message, you know, really quickly about their product or text. Sometimes we turn on the phone and pull one of their guys up on the phone and do a quick training thing with the kids real fast. Like oh, Mark, that's... Mark really did with that with us on the T-Studs real quick. Um, yeah. You know, technology is great, right? My, my last job uh, was a copywriter at uh, Marvin Windows. So uh, tomorrow I'll reach out to my, my friends in the marketing department there and see what they, uh, see what they can work out. It, it, it's, and they have somebody who there who would be, he's just, uh, he's, he's the trainer of the trainers for window installation. He's fantastic. So I'll have to nice. see. Yep. Windows see. we got sorted out. Now last, last house we put Marvin in, Marvin Windows. Oh, in. did you? Oh, nice. Yeah. But yeah, we're, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Any, any, anybody that, you know, that maybe listen to this and wants to connect, with me by all means we'll you know and we'll put your yeah we'll put your information in the show notes so we'll we'll Great. get uh, we'll make sure that they know how to get a hold of you and and, and uh, hopefully contribute to the program uh, what kind of so you said uh, you know describe what the house the current house that you're building describe it you know you want it to be high performing what what does it look like are we talking it's, is it a rambler or two-story is it a split level what, ranch just a ranch Once. style single yep. full basement yep. or uh, no so this one has a hybrid um crawl space slash slab uh if you saw jake bruton and steve basic did this on one of jake's builds where they actually did a basement hybrid um, yeah. it's kind of hard to explain through a podcast exactly how this works and looks but uh it's the the last one we had was an encapsulated crawl space so for us the crawl space becomes part of the interior it's inside so we it's, heat it, it's, cool conditioned. It, it, it's conditioned yep even on the last one it's all conditioned. So it, it we, you know, it's the red marker challenge when you go around it, it's inside the house. So, uh, um, are your utilities, are your utilities, the furnace and hot water heater, are they down there? There's enough space for that or where are those, um, they have, we have closets upstairs. All the plumbing will go into that. What's nice is there's like one drain line that goes into the kitchen that's underneath slab. Everything else is right down that middle corridor uh, of mm -hmm. that crawl. Um, which really is really a short basement. It has a cement floor and everything. Um, so uh, it's, I mean, three bedroom, two bath, 
1600 square foot house, approximately two car garage, you know, pretty standard kind of, uh, house size for, you know, our, our you know, a town like ours and stuff. How many square feet did, did you say how many it's square just, feet? I think it's just shy of 1600 livable. Okay. Nice. Um, is, so you mentioned, you know, one of my questions I had to ask you, and, and I think I already know the answer, but you know, some of these trade programs, I just think are, by the time the kids ever get to do anything, they're already bored out of their minds because there's so much safety, this and classroom, this, and, you know, so one of the questions I was going to ask you was, you know, if you, if you see any, if has there any other models that other people are doing that you would like to take away, but it sounds like you're doing it. I mean, I can't even think of a better way to do it. it, it what would you do? Diff would you do anything differently if you could? I mean, I'd probably do something a little bit different every year just because I learn uh, is, and that really comes down to like efficiency of the class. Mm -hmm. uh, when I taught at the prison, we used the prefab uh, Habitat for hum Humanity walls for the for the local habitat communities, and we would pre uh, penalize the walls out in the Sally Port, me and the uh, the uh, inmates, and we do those in like three days and ship those things out. So panelization, uh, you know, and I know that's becoming a bigger thing. Uh, you know, pre, yep. you know, pre-manufactured kind of, you know, or panelized. Um, so we've talked about introducing that. Uh, I, I, I do want to eventually do a remodel, like a high, so a high, you know, performance. So like buy, a, buy a house and, you know, fix, and bring fix it, it up. Yeah. yeah. And bring it up. Uh, I would love to have passive house tacked to one of ours. Um, our first blower door test on the last house, we were at 0. 0.5. ACH 50. And we did that with Jake Bruton. He came up, um, he came up and did a build show episode with us. I think oh, nice. Jake and, uh, those guys are going to come over again and do the first floor door test with us, which is pretty much just the envelope before we really start poking a bunch of holes in it. Sure. Our last floor door test on the last house, we stayed under one. We were at like 0. 0.9. Uh, so we, do you, you have, know, did so you have, was it, surprise, was it better or worse than what you thought it was going to be? Honestly, or was that so, what you were shooting for? I mean, it was the first time. I remember talking to Steve Basic. Um, he was talking to some of my students. We went down to Columbia, Missouri and visited a job site with him and Jake. And uh, Steve was talking to the kids. I said, Steve, what do you think, first time ever doing this, kids have never done this, what do you think will hit on the blower door? He's like, he goes, oh, man, I think you guys could easily get two or lower, you know, for a first time, your first blower door <laughs> test. You get a, and I was like, okay. point five you hit? And we hit a 0. 0.5 with <laughs> passive house standards. And all we had wow. installed at that time was uh, windows, doors, and the bathroom vents, the the, the exhaust oh. vents in the bathroom. So then, sure. then we went and poked a whole bunch of holes all over in place. But, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. we still – we were still at the, by the – it was all said and done. We were still under one. So now, oh. now the goal is always like right. 0. 0.6, right, right? If we can get that yeah, close yeah. to passive house, it, that's the goal. So – and I'm I'm competitive with myself, so <laughs> you know I got now I got to ask, who's harder to work with, teenagers or prisoners? Oh, teenagers, easily <laughs> every day. Yeah, prisoners, the inmates. Well, a they're adults, right? Right. And b where I was at, they it was minimum security, and they were out the door. So if they got to my class, they were one year or left. Sure. One year or less left. So they weren't messing around. Plus, yeah. they wanted to get out of the housing units because they had like housing units where they're all in the dorms. It's not really a dorm, but they had big rooms with a bunch of bunk beds. So they wanted out of the housing unit. And a lot of these guys, I mean, there's guys I learned a lot from them. I mean, some of these guys have been professionals for a long time. Like there's the HVAC guy. Well, like, sure. He was, yeah. he me how, we didn't get to do it in class, but he was like showing me how like bend and duck work and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I learned a lot from these guys. And and the thing is, a lot of these guys, I mean, really all they did was just messed up. Uh, they, yeah. they, they were business guys, and they just weren't in a, a legal business. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or, but more than likely nonviolent non -violent offenders, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Most most of it would have been, there been, so at that one, there was no gang affiliation. You couldn't, you couldn't have. Right. Now, there was some people that were at the end of maybe like a murder charge and stuff. Uh, but again, mm -hmm. I mean, they were, they had done lots of years and. They were out the door. Yeah, no, I, I tell it. People always ask me that question. I'm just like, inmate, I'll take the inmates all the time. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I had to. Yeah, yeah, you gotta ask. <laughs> but yeah, the it's, kids are much uh, more difficult. Yeah, yeah. I raised four boys or three boys. I, I, uh, I 
I can imagine. Now they're all good. And actually, my 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 my, uh, my oldest is a painter, and my middle one is a uh, low voltage electrician. We're putting uh, low voltage in the house for lighting. What's that? We're doing low voltage for all the lighting in the house. Oh, so all the lighting is going to be on a low voltage system. Yeah. That's interesting. I yeah, I'm, I was curious. Like I said, I'm, I'm building my own house. I was thinking about going that way. What is that called? There's a particular name for that. Did you? I don't know. When I was researching, because you were. Yeah. More, oh, because are you what type of wiring are you using? Is was it like communication wires or what? What yeah, kind of wires are you pulling? Point, is it is it power off Ethernet or something? Power. That's, Yes, POE. That's what it was. I would put a lot of research into that, and I was just, uh, I just was too nervous <laughs> to do it. I didn't know enough about it. I haven't been around enough about it. So, you know what? I, I actually haven't started pulling wires yet. So maybe I'll talk to you later, see how it goes with you guys. There you go. You mentioned, um, so you mentioned the, the house is donated. So are you, and you're obviously, you know, acting as a general contractor. Um, are you in charge of the budget and financing as well? I mean, are you in charge of if somebody wants to buy it? Are you the one who says no? We want ten thousand more, or yeah, we'll take that price. Or nope, it's owned by the school district, so that's the nice part about this. Uh, I get to be just the general. Card. Now, of course, I do have to stay budget conscious and kind of keep track. Sure. You know, keep track of things. So I work with uh, our district. Um, office, the the ladies that work in there that take care of um, accounts payable and stuff. Uh, I'm like in the but in um, our oh head finance department person. Uh, I talk with them a lot and we kind of make sure things are kind of on track and everything. And they're, I mean, the good thing is we also got a big donation from a big donor in town to get this project going. So we bought all brand new tools. I mean, we retooled everything, a uh, new tool trailer. We, um, I mean, we're set up probably better than a lot of the guys in town, and sure. which is great. Uh, now, granted, that was, that was a one more of a one-time expense. You know, tools should last quite a while now. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't have to worry about you know when it's time for the go on market. That none it's of, because it's nice because people are like oh you know can I can you you know help me out? I'm like nope. <laughs> so it, it takes me out of all <laughs> that. All, all yeah, that. that is actually nice. <laughs> But your your budget, so you don't spend. I mean, just anything with the government. It seems like it wouldn't surprise me if you spent forty percent of your time, you know, justifying budgets or doing book work or things like that. That's. It sounds like that's not the case. So, no, that would be horrible uh, because it would just be. I mean, not <laughs> not that I couldn't handle it because I had had a business and stuff, and and I'm trying to teach the kids the budget side of things. So, uh, we I was talking with the ladies uh, that run the accounting department stuff in the for the district and i was like hey can we can i get like a re week or monthly report and stuff just so i can kind of keep track of things so i don't have to call you and be like all right where, where what have we spent where are we at and uh they're like yeah that, and i go plus i want to use this to show the kids you know like this is what we spent on this now the, the problem the challenge of this is right especially this house we're getting so much at discounted donated. price and donated yeah. it's like if you're doing this in real world, yeah, it's hard. It's not real. It's hard to c convert, and you yeah. could spend a lot of time trying to convert that into real world. But yeah, and, and we get to do some other things. That so, probably so, this, so this is the, yeah. So this is the second house that you've done, right? And yep. have you got approved to do another one after this? Uh, yeah, the plan is to keep on rolling. Um, in fact, we we started looking for lots uh, for the next house and stuff. So it's they they have no. You know, they, it gets a lot of good public attention. Um, you know, it was something that when they closed it down, got a lot of bad press and a lot of bad heat in town. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are pretty upset. So, uh, yeah, no, nobody's told me to slow down or anything. So we just keep on rolling. That's that's fantastic. It's nice to hear a good. Uh, you know, you hear. I mean, the government is what it is, and we need we wouldn't be having this conversation if we didn't have a decent one. But you know, you hear these sure. stories about horrible waste and you know inefficiencies. But but this sounds like a real success story to me. Yeah, in our school, it, being in a rural community, it's been very blue collar. Like our, our school has always kind of been that mindset. Like we're I and mean, we 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 do you know college tracking and everything too. But 
mm-hmm. they're, they're just as much about, uh, you know, the trades as they are about college. So that is one nice thing. And I, I'll give our administration credit for all that too. That is, uh, yeah. And then the, I think, it, I think it might be turning around a little bit, but yeah, that hasn't been the case for sure. Always. Um, speaking of success stories, what can you, how about a couple of different six, actually, I'd be interested in the success story out of the, the prison folks too, but have you, had any students you've been doing it for a few years now have you had any students where you just thought oh boy i don't know about this kid uh but then it turns out that you know they're working and making money in the trades or is there any one or two students that really stand out to you and have a de- a, a good story yeah um i do know i've had I, I i obviously with the inmates you you know when i taught there you can never be connected with them once they got out um i did have one call back to the prison uh, as soon as he got out, he started working. He was up near Chicago, uh, started working for the deck company, building decks, and was like moved his way up through. And he called back, and that was a nice story to hear. Um, I have ran into a few of the former inmates uh, in Springfield area and stuff. They were doing very well, so that was always great to hear. And some one of them was doing trade work and stuff, so that was that was awesome. Uh, high school kids, yeah. I mean, I've had kids get into the Union electric, uh, the electricians union. I've had kids that just got hired on doing heavy equipment operating. I've had kids go. I had one kid that he wasn't in the house building program yet. This is before I started the house building program again. Um, mm-hmm. He is what tw- turning twenty one now. Twenty twenty one. Just bought his first house, and he got <laughs> into the welding program. And he never knew. He, he took it, the building trades before his house building. And he just loved what he, the opportunities they were out there to work with his hands and stuff. And yeah, 20, 21 years old, just bought a house, um, doing great. Um, we had, uh, well, one of my students, uh, an all-star, it was an all-star student for me. He COVID hit and he convinced his mom to let him remodel her bathroom. <laughs> oh wow <laughs> so that's what he did, I wonder, he I did turn out all right i mean did he get uh, did he have to uh, did he get kicked out of the house at, like midway midstream or <laughs> no it <laughs> worked great and, like remote. well and, yeah, and that's he, great and he does a lot of side work like i i refer him for handyman stuff all the time um and he's get he, he's actually huh. looking getting his degree um so that way he if he could if he would want he says he wants to be my replacement like uh, so that that's always a cool one. Um, that's, well, that's encouraging. Yeah, I mean, do you? So how many kids would you say important. coming out? I mean, I would imagine there's three, not three. Yeah, there's probably a bunch, but I'm thinking there's kids that just hate being in the classroom and want to do something different, and doesn't matter what it is. You got the kids who want to really do this for a career, and then you got the kids who probably aren't going to do it for a career, but are still interested in working with their hands. Is that is there is there one of those groups that you you get more, or is it kind of an even spread? Uh, I'd say even spread um, the, the, so the first group in 2019, when we kicked it off, I had had a lot of those kids at the school when I was teaching the classes at the school building. So for them, it was, uh, yeah, I'm going to a job site with Bloomy, you know? And so mm-hmm. um, they, they were all pumped about it and, and they were just, they were very much a blue collar group. Yep. Um, last year, seniors, it was such a weird year. We all know this that um the kids that really wanted to do something really started uh the standout the kids that were just there so they weren't in class yeah. that started the show so there was a bigger gap in that last year that was kind of frustrating but uh and annoying but at the same time i, I took the kids that really wanted to do something and we kept on going and the kids that went did it i was we just kept them busy so they weren't in trouble yeah. and now, well, this I'm year, sure, I'm sure some of those kids. Yeah, I'm sure some of those kids who just do it to get out of the classroom. I would yes. imagine there's at least one or two, or you know, however many of them are like, "Hey, you know what? This is this is actually pretty cool." Yeah, and we do have that where the kids are like, um, "Oh, I, I did not. Oh, I had one kid say, I didn't realize I'd already learned so much.'" And that well, that was just when we were putting a foundation in. And right. so this this year is pretty leveled out. Like the kids, we have a few kids that. They're not really lazy, but they're finding out this isn't their gig. So especially with the cold right now. So they try to, sure. hide, you know, kind of <laughs> stay out of the way and not get noticed. Yeah, hiding around, around the corners. Yep. Right. Right. So <laughs> but the, this group 
is pretty, you know, I'm not saying all 26 of them are going to go into the trades, but I know there's some kids that are interested in trades. There's some kids that are starting to get more interested in it. There's definitely some kids that are like, yeah, this won't be what I do, but enjoy being out sure, there. So, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the good thing is I kind of get to pick, I don't get to pick my kids. I get to disqualify the kids. So if oh, um, before they even start or during, during yeah. the process, if, like, so at, when they sign up at the end of the year for their next semester or their next year classes, I get to see that list yep. and get to go through. And I talk to the teacher at the school that teaches the class before they come here. I say, okay, how's this sure. one? This one, this one, my brother's also a teacher at the school. So he knows a lot of these kids because he does driver's ed. So he has all of them. And he's yep. like, and so he gives me, so I, I kind of talk to teachers. We're also working on, trying to start up like a application program, kind of even doing like interviews, not that those would really matter, but just for the job, you know, or just yep. the skill, you know, oh, practice. Uh, but this way, cause now I don't know the kids when they come in to the program necessarily. Uh, now I do have returning juniors to the seniors, you know, yep. I have those returning, but that's only maybe half the class at best. So I, I do get to pick my classes because it's one of those things where, if something goes bad on the job site, it can go bad fast and it can have big time consequences. So I can't sure. have the kids. Everybody yeah. thinks the trades kids are the bad ones. Well, yeah. you got to, yeah. you can't be the bad one in my class. Right. No. And, and all, are all your spots filled? We, we can have a total of 15. I think the first group morning group is 14. Second group is 12. Okay. Now I had, they, there was enough that re, they signed up, but I had, I just couldn't, there were some kids I couldn't let in and sure. order schedules, schedules wouldn't allow it. How about the, what's the ratio of uh, men versus women or young, uh, young men versus three, women, I guess. In three years, I've only had one girl. Really? Yeah. Is we're, there, now we are working. You know, oh, sorry, go ahead. You know, no, you go ahead. I was gonna say we're, we're trying to get we we are actively trying to get more girls because I've, I've and you'll hear a lot of shop teachers tell you this. You give me a team of all girls, I will outdo any all boy group any day of the week. <laughs> like their attention to detail, their listening abilities. Man. It's it's I, just so much I mean, better. I, I think just it's a team. I just think girls mature faster and maybe yeah. more throughout the life their lifetime. But <laughs> absolutely, um, absolutely. yeah, so that's what, and that's a challenge too. I don't you know, and I don't think anybody has the answer to that. But uh, I'm sure there's a lot of. Uh, do you get that, that one more question, and then and then we get to wrap it up? It, do you get local contractors or even contractors from Springfield saying, "Hey"? I need somebody who would you recommend? Is there anybody in your graduating class that uh, you can send my way or you could recommend? I mean, are there people reaching out to you from that side of things? I get call, I get messages from all over the country <laughs> for that. <laughs> there is no, huh. my kids can go, I tell them they can go work wherever they want to work. I could probably within, yeah. I probably got a good enough network now thanks to Instagram, social media, and, you know, people like you guys, you know, kind of sharing our story that, especially with the high performance side of things, um, kids that understand air sealing and details and things like that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, constantly. It is. I mean, we all know what's going on with the industry. I mean, it's not even our industry, everything, you know, they, they right. need kids that want to work. Uh, it's yeah. Constantly. <laughs> Well, your passion for uh, what you do is, and it's, it's obviously very clear and uh, boy, I hope, I hope, uh, I hope you have the best success moving forward. And I, I foresee your program growing and it wouldn't surprise me if other schools come to you and try to see how you're, how you're making this work, because I don't, I don't, we're work, I don't we're know working on that, too. that are doing like this, doing it like this. So thank you, yeah. Matt, for joining yeah. us. Um, and unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. And, and thanks again, Matt, for joining us. Please remember to send us your comments, questions, and suggestions to fhbpodcast at taunton.com. And please like, comment, or review us wherever you're listening. It helps other folks to find our podcast. Stay safe, everyone, and thanks again for listening.